We're Ruben and Steve. In the last episode, we weathered storms, witnessed an eclipse, and made it to the tropics. Another thing to note is that back in Fraser Island, the viewfinder in my camera stopped working. So here I'm filming blind. But we did see a dugong. And luckily, it swam in the right place to catch a glimpse. Here on the northern side of Great Keppel Island, crabs make great artwork. This is the masked lapwing, but Steve has nicknamed it Melted Cheese Face. Steve is not a cold water plunger, but he braved the sub 24 degrees Celsius waters to scrub the hull. Then we could enjoy the first tropical snorkeling of our trip. We had planned to sail to Yapoon Beach to reprovision, but while sailing, we heard an announcement over the VHF radio that a four metre crocodile had been spotted where we'd planned to kayak ashore. Instead, we anchored outside Rosalind Bay Marina and walked 10 kilometres to get our groceries. We were exhausted by the time we sailed back to the Keppel Group. Next stop was Middle Keppel Island, a nice private spot to practice handstands. I'm hoping to get a nice press to handstand before I'm 50, which isn't that far away. And this one, it's not too bad. My shoulders could be a little more open and I could lengthen my lower back and tuck my head. In theory, you should be able to stop at any point on the way down. It's okay, I'm not 50 yet. Now for a bit of history. The Keppel Group was home to the Wapabara people for over 5,000 years until they were forcibly removed and used as slaves. We were lucky to get to our next anchorage, Pearl Bay. It's a military zone and was closed to all visitors a few days after we left due to military activities, including live firing military sure has some stunning land in which to practice shooting things. It was a bit rough as we set off toward High Peak Island. Given the colour of the sky we weren't surprised to get hit by rain. The wind died down, so it ended up a bit of a slower trip than we expected. And that meant we hit some overfalls. When the wind is against current, the waves are tall and spiky. So we had some hectic sailing to do, so close to the island. But once we battled through to the calm side, we had the island to ourselves. We kayaked as far as we could, then carefully used rocks as stepping stones. The drying reef is pungent and loud with the clicks of sea creatures. There were no tracks, but we could climb the rocks to have a look around. We're intrigued to see the hoop pine, native to this area, and common on the islands in these latitudes. Steve demonstrated to me how to safely pick up a crab. You pin it down with a stick and then pick it up by the back two flippers. Never put your thumb on the shell. If you're holding the back two flippers, the claws cannot give you a nip. This crab was not harmed 
apart from perhaps being a bit surprised. Kayaked back over the delicate corals. In the morning, Steve had an unpleasant job. The anchor chain was stuck and we were in deep waters. Steve had to go for a dive. It turned out to come unstuck easily, but taught us to be more wary of assessing the bottom. Even in deep waters, one uncharted rock, even in deep waters, can leave you tangled. So once unstuck, we sailed to the Percy Islands through rain and rainbows. past huge blooms of algae. Due to increased storm activity, newly oxygenated waters give rise to marine algal blooms, such as phytoplanktons. We passed by many pretty islets on the way to South Percy Island, and we were nearly there when Steve caught us some dinner, a welcome addition to the pantry since we were low on fresh vegetables. It was a truly stunning evening and a gorgeous sunset. You know what they say, red sky at night, sailor's delight. Well, don't believe it. The next day was rubbish weather. Even though we were in the best shelter around, check out the mast swaying over there. We were doing the same. It was too rough to kayak ashore, so it was time to rest. Eventually it calmed down and we could explore South Percy Island. Our end was beautiful. The eastern end had been wiped out by fires. It looked like it was from a runaway campfire in a national park where fires are banned. Come on humans. Anyway, these humans pick up rubbish as they explore this beautiful island. These soft, flat rocks were the perfect yoga mat. After some land time, we were keen to dive. In fact, Steve was itching to try his new spear gun. We'd already eaten our other fish. In this cloudy water, I was careful to keep an eye on where Steve was, in case I looked like a giant fish. To be honest, most of the coral we saw there wasn't that healthy. We saw some nice coral sections though. The good thing about spearfishing is that you can choose what you want to kill and kill it quickly. Or, as is often the case, see that there aren't enough fish, kill nothing and eat chickpea stew. The chickpeas could wait this time. Steve did find dinner. Coral trout. I'd never had it before. It's delicious. This kept us going for a while and its free range, and its low carbon footprint. Join us next time as we head to the very famous, with boaties at least, Middle Percy Island, and enjoy the island hopping and fish watching we've been looking forward to for so long.